Alright, I'm just going to do a video debunking VaticanCatholic.com's video against faith alone and eternal security and their non-dispensationalism because in this video they will, because Catholics are non-dispensational, so they often will go to verses that are not even dispensationally for us to debunk salvation in this current dispensation, the time of the Gentiles, also called the Church Age. But you see Catholics, they think the whole Bible is written to them. You know, the whole Bible, you know, God used the Jews in the Old Testament, but now today he's using the Catholic Church, the Holy Mother Church. So they think the whole Bible is written to them, and they will go to passages like James 2.24, to say, that, oh, see, we're not saved by faith alone, and there's no eternal security. You're going to see that in this video. So let's get right into it. There are literally dozens of verses in the New Testament that refute justification by faith alone and the idea of once justified, always justified, which is sometimes called once saved, always saved. The ideas of faith alone and once justified, always justified are contradicted and refuted by basically every book of the New Testament. Okay, so... First off, we should note that not every book in the New Testament is even written to Christians. For example, Matthew 24, you know, written to the Jews. Uh, Matthew 24, verse 16 says, let, the, let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Verse 20 says, you know, talking about the Sabbath day. Christians don't observe the Sabbath. James, uh, James, the book of James. You know, James chapter 1, verse number 1 says, James to the 12 tribes. Uh, Christians are not part of the 12 tribes. So not every part of the, the, not every book in the New Testament is written to Christians. So yeah, you, you could actually go to books in the New Testament that refute eternal security because not all of them are even dispensationally for us and even written to us. So again, he's using this logical fallacy, but again, non-dispensationalism from Catholics. Like, what do you expect? Let's continue. Since there is so much proof on this matter, limiting the argument to one verse or passage really doesn't do justice to the amount of evidence that can be brought forward on the issue. However, if I had to pick just one passage in the New Testament, to refute faith alone and once justified, always justified, I would pick Galatians 5, 19 through 21. In Galatians 5, 19 through 21, St. Paul gives a list of mortal sins that exclude people from heaven. The list includes fornication, impurity, drunkenness, and other things. He then says, quote, I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God, end quote. Okay, two things. The context of Galatians chapter 5 is talking about not walking in the flesh. It's not talking about salvation. It's just talking about resisting the lusts of the flesh and everything. And secondly, the kingdom of God is not heaven. The kingdom of God is spiritual fellowship with God, according to Romans chapter 14, verse 17. So, he takes this verse, talks about how certain sins, and he calls them mortal sins, which that term is not even biblical. Uh, there's no mortal or venial sins or whatever. Uh, but he takes those and says, see, look, you know, you can't do these things, or you're not going to enter the kingdom of God. So, first of all, he thinks the kingdom of God is heaven, which, of course, like I mentioned earlier, it's, it's the uh, spiritual fellowship with God. But he takes that, he twists the verse, and says that, see, look, you have to earn your salvation. There's no faith alone. No one saved, always saved. Um, again, read the context of the passage. You know, it's ridiculous. But let's continue. St. Paul emphatically warns the believers that if they commit those grave sins, they will not go to heaven. Again, kingdom of God is not heaven. According to Romans 14, verse 17, the kingdom of God is spiritual fellowship with God. So this verse is not talking about doing these things and you don't go to heaven. It's talking about if you do these things, you won't have any fellowship with God. That's what the verse is talking about. That completely refutes both faith alone and once justified, always justified. It proves that a believer can lose his salvation, thus refuting once justified, always justified. It also proves that a believer can lose his salvation for grave sins, that is, for his deeds, not just for denying the faith or for apostasy. Okay, where does the verse say you lose your salvation according to your deeds? He says it says you lose your salvation according to your deeds. Uh, this verse is not, again, it's not even talking about salvation. The context is talking about not, not uh, doing the lust of the flesh. Because a Christian can still, they still have a sinful nature. Romans chapter 7, verse 15 and 25 talks about, Paul talks about his sinful flesh. And he says, you know, uh, that, that, that's the image, it says he talks about how what's in him to off no good thing. You know, and of course, they'll say, well, that was before Paul got saved. Okay, read verse 25, where it talks about how, you know, he's, he's trying to serve God, you know. Uh, Romans 20, chapter 25 proves that Paul was still saved when he was struggling with the lust of the flesh. So, he, you know, he says, you know, it talks about serving the law of God. You can't do that as a lost person. Paul was still saved as he was struggling with the flesh and sinning. So... The verse is not talking about salvation. And by the way, again, nowhere does it say in the verse that 
you do these things, you you uh, lose, you, you don't go to heaven. Again, just, just completely twisting the verse. But let's continue. That refutes justification by faith alone. And a Protestant can't successfully argue that the passage only applies to fake or insincere believers, but not to truly justified believers. No, that argument fails miserably, because when St. Paul says, quote, I warn you, as I warned you before, he's speaking directly to the true believers. He gives the warning directly to fellow members of the body of Christ, the very people he identified as, quote, sons of God, and as having, quote, put on Christ, in Galatians 3, 26 to 27. He's right. Paul was speaking to Christians. And you know what else Paul said? In Galatians chapter 3, verse 26, Paul says, you're all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. You're a child of God by faith. In Galatians 3, 24, he talks about how you're justified by faith. In Galatians 3, verse 7 to 9, it says that God justifies the heathen through faith. I mean, in Ephesians 1, 13, it says you're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise when you believe. And Ephesians 4, 30 talks about how you're sealed until the day of redemption. Uh, can someone who's sealed with the Holy Spirit lose their salvation and become unsealed? No. So, again, I mean, scripture after scripture after scripture debunks this, this, this Catholic lie of conditional security. But again, he's lost. He, he can't see that. He thinks it's talking about salvation when it's talking about not, not doing the lust of the flesh. Again, I mean, what a heretic. Let's continue. Thus, there's no doubt that his statement applies to true believers. He's telling the true believers, I warn you. Don't be deceived by a false message such as faith alone, or once justified, always justified. Uh, no, that's not what Paul said. He didn't say, don't be deceived by faith alone, or once justified, always justified. He's talking about not resisting the lust of the flesh. It's kind of funny, he won't, he won't read verse 16 and verse 17. Because he, he takes his passage out of context. The context of the passage is not talking about not doing the lust of the flesh. And again, the kingdom of God is spiritual fellowship with God. It's not talking about heaven. I mean, just talk, I mean, it's a lying spirit. I mean, I believe most of these Catholics have a lying spirit to where he'll leave out the verses, purposefully leave out the verses that prove that it's talking about just talking about not doing the lust of the flesh. And say, see, it's talking about salvation. It's not just their, their own, you know, wicked mind. It's actually, I believe, it's a lying spirit doing this. It's ridiculous. So I could do some more videos. Debunking is VaticanCatholic.com guy. He's got so many weird doctrines. Uh, I might do some more videos in the future, but for now, this is my video debunking his heretical non-dispensational video and just twisting the scriptures and just changing the meaning of words it's ridiculous catholics have to do major mental acrobatics to prove their heretical false satanic theology so anyway god bless you goodbye